Hey guys, it's Special Z here, and welcome to episode 74 of my New York City Wrestling Series for TW 2016. So this is the Hall of Fame ceremony for 2021, and of course tonight's inductees will be the Ring Generals, and of course they will actually be going in as a tag team. And uh, yeah, they are a multi-time NYCW tag team champion, um, as well as a former... Uh, Cot World Tag Team Champion as well, which is of course the Confederation of the Territories. Uh, so yeah, let's run the show. It is pretty much dedicated to them. We start off with a freestyle angle. I think they're all actually freestyle angles. Oh, actually, except for one, uh, but that doesn't have anything to do with the ring generals. Uh, so yeah, we have a freestyle angle. Uh, basically, no one's rated on this segment. Or oh, actually, sorry. The ring generals are rated, but they're not actually on screen, so it's a video package. And then the Hall of Fame ceremony kicks off with a best of the ring generals montage, including their multiple title wins. And of course, it's featuring Dean Waldorf and Marv Statler. So 74 B minus, not great, but still pretty good. And we kick off with a tag team match, of course, was the one we pre booked on the last episode, which gets a 73 B minus, which is pretty bloody good considering. Uh, Devil May Care aren't very over at the moment. Uh, we also need to mention something else, but I'll get into that in a second. In a bout that had great heat and decent wrestling, the Ring Generals defeated Devil May Care in 945 when Marv Statler defeated Acid 2 by Pim 4 with a backdrop backbreaker. In terms of in-ring work, Dean Waldorf was head and shoulders above everybody else. So yeah, Ring Generals get a win over the newest tag team in NYCW. Um, and unfortunately, Devil May Care, Acid 2, and Stuntman have zero chemistry as partners. So they have absolutely no chemistry, and uh, you actually get a penalty for that as well. Um, as you can see, penalized for tag team chemistry. So that sucks. Um, kind of puts a big spanner in the works, because it's obviously going to affect basically every single match they have uh, when they're together. So that really sucks. I don't understand why they would be a tag team if they have bad chem or zero chemistry. It's not even bad chemistry, it's zero chemistry together. So that sucks, but again, I mean, there's nothing I can really do about that. I might have to split them up um, or just use them as solo go. I, I don't know. I have no idea what we're going to do with that. Um, there is one possibility, and that's for me to bring in the original Acid. He's actually unemployed at the moment, um, but he's a negative, a very negative, yeah, I think he's very negative influence backstage, apologies if you can hear a bell in the background, um, yeah, I think that's kind of the only option I really have is to bring in the original Acid and have just an Acid tag team, and then maybe use Stuntman as a, uh, as a, a singles guy or potentially put him in a tag team with Mar Stranger, because I do think he's actually the better of the two in this tag team. Anyway, moving on, still a B-, minus. I'm happy with that. Uh, we then go into an 85B plus angle. Uh, this one, again, doesn't really have anything to do with the Ring Generals, but uh, it's a bit of an interesting, and it's a really good storyline. Uh, well, st it's kind of a storyline, but it's a really good angle. Anyway, Tennessee William says he's going to send a Bret Hart break back to Europe where his daddy pays people to like him. And of course, this all plays in with uh, the whole backstage mentality that the Midnight Prowler started, and uh, Bear Bukowski has continued um, with their hatred of Bret Heartbreak. I think another four people now have simmering tension with Bret Heartbreak, and obviously I've, I've been doing my part to try and you know, turn people's opinions around on him, and it's, it just, every, for every, like, one person I, I managed to save their relationship, another four people end up having a simmering tension with him, so, yeah, I think we're gonna, we're gonna let him go, um, he's up against Tennessee William in the next match, which gets an 87 B+, plus. wow, that's a pretty good rating. In an exceptional match, Tennessee William defeated Bret Hartbreak in 19 minutes 42 seconds by pinfall with the Devil's Crossroad. Tennessee William was really off his game, and apparently these two have great chemistry. 
so that sucks. Uh, but yeah, very, very good match. 87B+, plus, good stuff. Okay, so we then go into another angle, and this is Graham Gorman. Um, he's actually in a match up against Marv Statler up next. The angle only gets a 66C+, plus, not too bad for Graham. Um, and Graham says he's going to win tonight again. A win tonight against Statler would be the biggest coup of his career. Or the biggest coup. It's not coup. It's coup. Uh, the biggest coup of his career so far. Which, you know, it would be. It's a very big night. Of course, the Hall of Fame um, is based around Marv and Dean. So, yeah, a win would be very big. The match itself gets an 80B. In an exceptional match, Marv Staller defeated Graham Gorman in 19 minutes, 45 seconds, by pinfall with a backdrop backbreaker. So yeah, Marv wins, as you would kind of expect, over Graham Gorman. Uh, but a pretty decent match. 80B, that's solid. We then go into a 96A star. Charger Siaki makes a spectacular over-the-top entrance. Uh, the next match is a Tri-State Regional title match. Fatal 4-Way, which gets a 79B. In an exceptional match, Charger Siaki defeated Emmanuel Bryant, Logan Wolfsbane, and uh, Xavi Ferreira in 20 minutes, 20 seconds, when Charger Siaki defeated Xavi Ferreira by pinfall after using a foreign object. So he basically grabs the title, really pissed off that he's in a Fatal 4-Way match, and just smashes Xavi Ferreira across the head with the, uh, the Tri-State Regional title and gets the pin. Of course, no disqualification because it is a Fatal 4-Way match. Xavi was the weak link, and apparently Logan Wolfsbane has sustained a torn meniscus, which I believe is quite a bad injury. So that sucks, because I was kind of starting to push Logan. I was actually contemplating putting the title on him in this match. Uh, but yeah. The title wasn't actually on the line either. I'm an idiot. Anyway. Um... <laughs> Well, let's just say it was a... Anyway, yeah, I, I meant to put the title on the mo on the line in this match, um, so that's okay. But Xavi is improving in rumble skills, and Charger is improving in technical skills. Good stuff. Moving on to, to a 100A star promo, uh, another freestyle angle. The franchise players talk about how the ring generals influence them into becoming a tag team. And of course, these, these two guys, they were both singles wrestlers, both big menacing black dudes that uh, that were really good brawlers, essentially. And uh, they're basically saying that, you know, the Ring Generals, the success that they had as a tag team um, influenced these two into becoming a, a pretty good tag team. There are 11 defenses into their first ever title reign uh, with the tag belts. And, uh, yeah, they're basically putting their success you know, somewhat down to the ring generals and uh, the influence they had on them. So that's a, a pretty good angle. A nice 100A star before the main event, which gets a 85B+. Plus. Pretty solid. I, I knew this was going to do quite well. In an exceptional match, Dean Waldorf defeated Chess Maniac in 1944 by pinfall with a Waldorf salad toss. And apparently Chess Maniac is getting better at his gimmick. No worker improvements, but a, a pretty solid... 85B plus there uh, for our main events, and of course Dean picking up the win. Of course, he's a, a former Empire champion. I mean, he's I think he's probably the only guy that's ever held uh, the Empire title and the tag team titles at the same time. Um, so a very he was a very very good wrestler for us. Especially we kind of went through a real bad period, and um, yeah, he pe definitely picked up the slack there and was very, very over with the fans. Okay, so we then move into a final angle, which gets an 89A. That's actually a really good rating. I didn't think it would do this well, because they're both rated on, on uh, their overness. And, uh, yeah, Marv's a little lower than Dean was, so good stuff. So Dean and Marv thank the NYCW fans for their loyal support over the years, over all the years that they've been in NYCW together. So yeah, 89A. Brilliant way to actually finish the show. I'm quite happy with that. The overall show rating gets an 86B+. Apparently Marv Statler was used too much. I think that's probably because he's a... He might be a mid... I thought he was an upper mid-carder. 
Hmm. I thought he was. I don't know. Anyway, really good. Um, I don't... Uh, I think... Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think we'll go Tennessee, because their match was really good. Uh, we'll tell him he's awesome. Uh, and then I think we just... Yeah, I think we'll just go with Dina Marv. May as well, it kind of fits quite nicely, to be fair. And we'll give these two guys hugs. And, uh, yeah, that should round off the Hall of Fame ceremony show, of course. We've also got to induct them both into the Hall of Fame as a tag team now, so we'll do that before we end the episode off. Um, but I'm really happy with that. That was quite a good show. Um, we've got a couple of decisions as well. Alright, so let's have a look at Logan first of all, of course, picking up the Torn Menis. Oh, God. It's bad. It's so bad. Oh, he's going to be out for one whole year. 11 months and 3 weeks. That's real, real bad. Damn it. God damn it. He's, he's really good. That sucks. Uh, that's really... Yeah, that's a, that's a bit of a, a bummer. I'm not going to lie. That is a bit of a bummer. Okay, what decisions do we have? Oh, here we go. Oh, yep. Bear Bukowski wrestled high on drugs last night. Did he even... He didn't even wrestle last night. Bear Bukowski wasn't even on that card. Unfortunately, I can't send him to rehab because that's what I would like to do. Uh, but you have to be a cult company and have them on a written deal to actually do that. Um, and I can't suspend him either, because it's the same sort of deal, so... Really, the only thing I can do is fine him, other than actually firing him. And I don't want to do that, because he's our Empire Champion. Um, but that is, uh, that's a bummer. Another bummer. Uh, we have actually gone up to 64C popularity in the Tri-State. Um, and we're also 63C, um, importance. And that has gone up because... I think Tri-State went back up to 99% for its regional importance. And I think New England actually dropped down to 97 So that's a little bit of a n another bummer. I've said bummer like three times. But uh, yeah, that sucks because it's, it's going to slow down the, the progress to cult even more. Which is not ideal because we want to be getting that as soon as possible. Uh... So yeah, apparently we're the 15th best company in the world at the moment, which is good to see. Um, the bank balance is very healthy at the moment. Um, I'm actually contemplating building my own arena. Yeah, I was contemplating building a venue. I was thinking about maybe building like an 18,000 seater stadium. Not too expensive, and it would pay itself back fairly quickly. Um, and of course... Uh, when you create your own arena, you actually make it a hotbed. So you kind of gain more fans in your arena than you would gain in a, you know, a typical arena that you would host a show in. Um, so I'm contemplating doing that. I don't know yet. Um, it's still, a, it's only at a, a very early stage. And if I do do it, I will probably do it um, on an episode. And, uh, of course, we can't actually build a developmental territory yet, because you have to be cult to do that. Okay, so yeah, let's induct our boys into the Hall of Fame. Alright, so we'll check for eligible candidates. Honest Frank, no. Roger Cage, no. Dean Waldorf, well, we're not going to do Dean, but uh, the Ring Generals, we will actually do. So they've had six tag team title, or six different tag team titles, and they've headlined eight shows. So that's a, that's a pretty good career, six tag team titles. And, uh, yeah, we won't do any more of those guys. But there we go, guys. The Ring Generals, five times the NYCW tag team titles. And, of course, that, uh, that number six was actually the COT World Tag Team Titles. Uh, which is cool.
So that's really awesome. Happy to get these guys in. I feel like they're they're very very deserving. When you look at some of the other tag teams, like we've got Wiley Coyote here, who are probably the, well they're the only other tag team. Oh, apart from Old School Principles, uh, but they only reached four tag team titles, and uh, Old School Principles only reached four tag team titles as well. So yeah, essentially. The Ring Generals are the most decorated tag team in our history, which is exactly the reason why they've been inducted at such such a young age, really. They're only 36, and they're already in our Hall of Fame. Um, I'm big fans of them, as you can tell. I mean, I put the title, the, the main event title, on Dean, and uh, let them win the COT tag team titles as well. Uh, let's have a quick look at that, actually. Have a look at the Alliance titles, of course. We haven't really checked these too much. Demelza Wade is still the uh, COT Women's Tag Team... Uh, the COT Women's Champion... Uh, yeah, Champion. I don't know why I said Tag Team there for a second. Just constantly thinking about the Ring Generals. Uh, but she's got 16 defenses, which is crazy. Uh, we've then got... The World Heavyweight championship, which is currently held by Fumihiro Ota, and he's only got the one defense, and he took the title off Too Hot, who had seven, and of course Ernest Youngman was behind him with uh, with 14 there, 17 for Lopez, and the, wow, the Cot World Tag Team Champions is uh, Fro Shaw and Matt Sparrow, and the prestige is actually higher than the World Heavyweight, which is odd. Uh, you don't really see that because it's a, a floating title as opposed to a main event title, but yeah, it's at 95 A star, which is really high. Um, and yeah, if you look back through it, I mean, it was quite kind of a long time ago, but uh, Marvel Malloy and Storm Spillane, of course, uh, we had the American Cobras once upon a time, and Marv Statler and Dean Waldorf actually beat them for the World Tag Team titles, and uh, made 11 defenses, which is the highest ever defenses so far, which is really cool to see. And uh, yeah, they then lost the titles to Nathaniel Casino and Eric Blackley, um, but they had a pretty good run as well, so that's pretty good to see. Uh, interesting to see El Serpiente and Genio Verde are actually the... Uh, Cot World Tag Team title, or champions, title holders, at one stage as well, which I didn't really know about. Uh, but yeah, this is probably the reason why Froshaw is doing so well at the moment, because he's actually the the Cot World Tag Team champion, or one half. He's also IPW's Tag Team champion as well, and I assume that's with Matt Sparrow. Yeah, the, the Demolition Crew. I actually contemplated bringing him in, but I feel like Froshaw is kind of already past that stage. Um, he's also 42 years old, so yeah. I, d I definitely think Fro's past that stage. Fro's more you know... He's like the, uh, the, the not main event level, but he's like right under, you know, competing for the championship. Um, and he's kind of going to be involved with Marsh Stranger going into the future. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Um, don't forget to tune in next episode, which will, of course, be the event New York Nightmare. And then we only have one more show after that before we start 2022, which would be pretty cool. Um, definitely, I think it's... Yeah, that'll definitely be the furthest I've ever gone in a TEW save before, so that's pretty cool as well. Um, another thing I forgot to do is show you the stable on last episode. I, I said I was going to do it, and then I, I kind of realized after I'd finished recording that that was kind of what I promised to actually show you guys um, before we ended the episode. Uh, but yeah, here we have the downfall. Of course, you know, the plans have kind of been screwed up a little bit. Uh, but here we go. Marsh Stranger has been in NYCW for a few years, while he has had some success here in winning the King of New York tournament, he is yet to achieve true greatness. He has recruited 
recruited. If I, I can't talk today. He has recruited Devil May Care, a very talented, or it should be a very. Oh, they're not really young, I suppose. A very talented tag team. One question remains, though, and that's kind of, you know, left on a bit of a, a cliffhanger there. Um, also, because I ran out of text, um, unfortunately, because I did actually have a bit more to write after that. So yeah, I mean, that kind of description kind of plays into the, the whole idea that Marsh Stranger might not actually be the leader of this stable. The leader, the guy that's pulling the strings might not have revealed himself yet. And although, you know, the NYCW fans believe Marsh Stranger is the leader, um, it's it's probably true that he's not the true leader, and uh, someone else is is uh, playing him like a fiddle and using him to potentially set up a pretty good debut. Anyways, guys, that's going to end the episode there. Hope you have enjoyed. Don't forget to tune in next episode and drop a like if you enjoyed this one. Thank you for watching and goodbye. <laughs>